getting ready to change my current ramp gate spring assist setup. This has worked pretty good for quite a while, but uh, I think it could work a lot better and probably be a little bit more efficient. Uh, the way I have it right now, the spring on both sides actually takes up about three inches of the inside capacity of my trailer and uh, takes up that much space on the ramp gate as well. And when you're backing up one of these commercial mowers with a big hopper system and a vacuum and all that on it, you don't have much room to spare, even on a trailer that's extra wide like this one. So what I want to do is basically create a uh, spring assist that sits on top of the rails. So I went to a local farm store. I picked up these two Schedule 40 outdoor PVC pipes. They're a two inch inside diameter. I think they're like a two and a quarter or so outside diameter. First thing I'm gonna do is completely take the spring off of one side and start uh, start working on that one side. One side is done and it's already working quite a bit better. So here's the new side and I'll get in closer on it here in a second. Don't mind the mess, I've still got all my tools scattered out to do this other side. So you can see just the angle of the lift. On the left side, it's pulling, or it has to work quite a bit harder to pull the gate up than this side does, just because of the angle that it's pulling from. And on this side, like I said, about three inches of space that it's taking up. Three inches of space that I really need. And then on this side, check that out. Went from three inches to maybe a half an inch. So, huge difference there. And then my cables actually ran on the outside of the gate now. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be a huge difference on clearance going in and out. So, Anyway, um, <clears throat> let me get in a little closer here. So here's what I have going on on the gate, which isn't much different uh, than what I had before. It's almost exactly the same, except that I moved, I moved my eye bolt. It was like in this area and farther down, um, and I moved it over to the side now. And then show you the end of this and I'm going to show you how I how I did all of this but this is just to kind of show you what it looks like so I have these these D clips these D pins and that's what I'm using on both ends so this one this one runs through and has these two bushings on it that I used my belt sander to shape the ends of so that it can roll and so that it also keeps the cable centered all right and then I've just got one little bolt here holding that in. I'm probably going to have to replace that with a longer one because it's barely getting a bite. And it's just a little pan head bolt. I'll show you all that when I do the other one. Uh, my pipe is 10 feet long and I used the full length. I actually tried um, this other pipe right here and I'm gonna have to save for a different project now because I tried to use it at seven feet and seven feet wasn't long enough to get the uh, amount of cable travel that I needed out on the end. So I ended up going with 10, 10 feet. The other end, so I have my eye bolt that's bolting the pipe to the trailer and then the eye bolt itself I've got this D-pin going through it and going through the, the end of the spring, the eye, I guess, or the loop on the end of the spring. So that's how I attach that. I don't have anything attaching this in the middle yet. So as you can see, you can move that a little bit. Um, I probably need to attach that somehow, maybe just a U-bolt even. Uh, it wouldn't take much. In fact, I could take a U-bolt. I could take a U-bolt and run over this 
and just just have it nutted on one side and just let it kind of act as a hook to just kind of hold that in place uh, it really doesn't need much but a little bit of support there would be a good idea so so anyways um, this side is just about done except for replacing that one little bolt down there that I need to uh, need to replace I wanted to show you guys a quick rundown of the hardware the mounting hardware that I used and this is just for one side so if you're gonna do if you're gonna mount yours up the same way I did mine you're gonna need all of this hardware times two so I have a, a couple of these couplers and these are um, probably overkill but they're 1760 pound test these uh, it's quite a bit more than you're gonna need obviously but that was just the approximate size that I needed and the weight rating isn't going to hurt anything to be overkill so then I have one pan head bolt with a lock nut and that's what I use to uh, mount the end of the pipe down my two eye bolts this one I'm just reusing from my previous setup this is a 3 8 with a lock nut and about a, a two inch bolt a couple washers this one is half inch a couple washers lock washer and a regular nut and then I have these D rings or D clips they're three inches long and the circumference of the clip is almost perfect for a two and a half inch diameter pipe and these are the bushings and I just happen to have these these were left over from a installation kit from something else they were spacers and uh they just happen to work out perfect to fit inside that pipe together. I still have to shape them, and I'll do that on the belt sander. I'm just going to put a bevel on each end of them, which will allow them to turn inside the pipe, and we'll keep the cable centered up. So I have two of those D-clips, <clears throat> and then, of course, your cable, and that's the cable that came with the garage door spring. So... Um, I'm not sure where all you can get those, but I do know that Home Depot and Lowe's carry them. So, anyway, that's the basic mounting hardware for one side. And then, of course, you need your 10-foot, in my case anyway, 10-foot, uh, 2.5-inch underground or above-ground conduit. I'm using the Schedule 40 above-ground conduit. And it's also, uh, because it's the above ground conduit, it's UV resistant. So I shouldn't have any issues with it sitting on top of the trailer getting sun exposure. So, all right, let's get to putting this all together. Okay, one thing that I'm going to have to do, and I had to do this to the other side. I have all this that's in the way of my pipe because my pipe needs to run right to the very end of this. So I'll show you what I did on the other side. See how the pipe needs to come right to the edge of the trailer. Okay, so what I did, I used the cutting disc and the grinder and uh, just cut out, a, cut out a section of that in all three of those pieces so that I could run my pipe through. Uh, one thing that I figured out before I was completely done, on this side I used a two and a half inch hole saw worked quite a bit better quite a bit cleaner cut uh, so that's what I'm going to do on the other side I'll probably just use my hole saw to make my cuts on all three pieces and then I have to reroute that wiring so that it's out of the way and you can't really see it on this on this side but the wiring is down there it's just no longer in the way I moved it to a spot where it can run through kind of underneath the bevel of the pipe so it's not in the way any, any longer. So that's one modification that I had to make to my trailer other than just drilling holes. And uh, depending on how your trailer's set up, you may or may not have to do that. This is a landscape trailer, so it's a little bit different. But uh, hopefully your trailer doesn't have this sticking up on the end where you have to modify anything. Okay, I have my channel all cut through there as you can see so ready to 
get my pipe down. On the end that gets mounted down, that's the anchor point for the spring. This is how I drilled it out. So for my eye bolt, it's a half inch hole and it's one inch to the center from the end, okay? And then straight across that hole for the pin, this is a 3 8 hole, 3 8 drill bit rather, and it's one and a quarter to the center. And the reason for that is because on the inside, with the eye bolt turned sideways, what you're going to do is take this D clip, you're going to run the, the loop on the spring right up beside the eye bolt so that they're in line with each other, the eye and the loop on the spring, and then you're going to run this pin through both of them, and that's what anchors the spring. So the reason that I set that forward is so that when it goes through the hole, it's right at the it's right at the edge or the end of the eye bolt. And that way that way this D pin or D clip, the pin part is actually setting against the eye bolt. So the eye bolt's holding it instead of the PVC holding it. Alright, I wanted to show you this real quick. I've got my I've got my bolt ran through on the inside right here. And through the outside, all I have to do is tighten up my nut and then I'm ready to run the spring. And what I did on the on the other side is I, I ran my spring up inside there and I've got my I've got my cable attached to the spring like so. And then you don't need anything on the other end because you're just gonna run your your pin right through that right through that loop on the on that end. And then I took this uh, squeegee handle right there because it's like seven foot long. It's longer than normal. And I used it to push the spring all the way up to the other end so I could get the pin through it. So I'm going to get this tightened up real quick and then get that done. The spring is fed through and I've got the D-pin or D-clip through the eye of the spring and through the eye of the uh, eye bolt. So now we're down to this end. I've got my bolt tightened up that holds the pipe in place. And the next thing I need to do is take my bushings, take those to the belt sander, and get them shaped real quick. The bushings are ready. Put this in here and uh, get ready to hook up to the gate. The only thing I need to do really is just run the cable over the top of this when I put it through. So the gate's closed right now. This is how it sits when it's closed. And as you can see, I actually need to loosen up the tension some because I can I can push that down to the ground. And it actually starts to pull it back up. So I'm going to have to adjust that a little bit, adjust my cables out just to probably an inch or two, but that's the end result. Works really good.